Hey Emerson, how long is it gonna take me to teach cross picking today? Five minutes. Hey TAC family, this is episode 255 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show, a show packed full of inspiration and fun designed to help you get more fulfillment, progress, and joy out of your guitar journey. Coming up in a little bit, I've got some questions and comments from the Guitar Pick episode, and I've got some acoustic news you can use sprinkled throughout today's episode. But first, let me teach you cross picking in less than five minutes, and I'm going to give you some great cross pickers to listen to as well. Go ahead and start your timer. Step number one is alternate picking, meaning your pick alternates between a downstroke and an upstroke. The rule is this, you go down on the downbeat and up on the upbeat. So if a measure is counted one and two and three and four and, you go down on the numbers and up on the ands. It would sound like this. One and two and three and four and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You already know how to cross pick. I know it doesn't seem like it, but that's what brings us to step two, even cross picking. Instead of staying on one string, we're gonna pick across strings, cross picking. What I want you to do is grab a chord. We're gonna grab a C chord. We're gonna go down on the A string, up on the D, down on the G, up on the B. That's cross picking. So at speed, it would sound like this. It's really cool if you do a bass walk down to an A minor from a C chord. That would sound like this. Okay, before we go any further, and there's some really juicy stuff coming up, I wanna give you five great cross pickers to listen to. Number one, the originator, George Shuffler. Two, James Allen Shelton. Number three, Kenny Smith. Number four, David Greer. Number five, Molly Tuttle. Step number three, odd cross picking. If even cross picking went across four strings, then odd cross picking will go across three strings. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to fret the fifth fret of the D string, and all we're gonna do is do a different pattern. Instead of alternate picking, I want you to go down, down, up. Down on the D, down on the G, up on the B. Down, down, up, down, down, up, and for the last two eighth notes, you're gonna go down on the D, up on the G. At tempo, it would sound like this. If I was to count with it, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Here's something extra cool. You can take this fretted position on the D string, move it up to the seventh fret, do that pattern, move it up to the ninth fret, do that pattern, the third fret, do that pattern, the fifth fret, do that pattern. It would sound like this. Step number four is to play. You have the tools. I want you to pick a style and mess around with it. Generally speaking, even cross picking works great for rhythm guitar, Odd cross picking works great for lead guitar, but you can actually mix and match. What your job is, is to find something that works for you and use it and ultimately have a blast. Okay, I hope you dug this quick lesson and in the comments below, let me know if it helped. 
Let me know if you love cross picking. Let me know if you've never done this before and all of a sudden you're like, wow, this is a new tool I have in my guitar toolbox. Less than five minutes. I did it. I can't believe it because usually I'm pretty darn long winded. To celebrate, let's hop in the Tony's Acoustic Challenge Acoustic Tuesday mobile news van. Welcome to the Tony's Acoustic Challenge Acoustic Tuesday news van where I deliver to you acoustic news you can use while I'm on the move. I just thought of that. Our first story comes from Gwenifer Raymond, phenomenal American primitive fingerstyle guitar player from the UK. This is where the news comes in. She just announced that she will be touring the US, specifically the Midwest. This is coming to you at the end of September, and I strongly, strongly recommend you go see her play live because this is quite possibly a once in a lifetime opportunity. That being said, if you've never heard her before, let's go ahead and give her a quick listen. Have you heard of Bob Minner before? Bob Minner is a phenomenal flat picking guitarist. You know, we've been talking a lot about flat picking and cross picking on today's episode, and I thought to myself, you need to know about Bob's new album. Well, new in the last couple months anyway. It's entitled From Sulphur Springs to Rising Fawn, and it's a collection of Norman Blake tunes that, well, Bob plays. Bob does great justice to Norman's tunes here, and in fact, I want you to hear one. This is one entitled Coming Down from Rising Fawn, and pay special attention to the guitar he's playing because it's Norman Blake's own Gibson Banner Southern Jumbo. A pretty great sounding guitar. <laughs> This next news item is really more of a picture than it is a news story, but nonetheless, you need to see it. It's a picture of Tony Rice outside the original Santa Cruz Guitar Company shop. I believe this was in the 70s, and I thought, you know, we're talking about flat picking, we're talking about cross picking. You need to see this picture because it's downright awesome. And to me, it signifies the relationship between Tony Rice and Richard Hoover. Speaking of Tony Rice, cross picking, and guitar picks, let's go back to episode 252 where I talked about my 10 favorite guitar picks. I want to look at a few comments from that episode. The first one comes from Jess Jones. He says this, I've been digging the Dava picks, rubber grip. I find them relatively inexpensive if I lose one, but thanks to the rubber, I almost never drop it. I'd like to hear more about thumb picks. Steve Earle used one for strumming, I think. Indeed, Steve Earle does still use one, and the resounding note from that episode was that people want thumb picks. So in the future, I'll be doing an episode on my favorite thumb picks, which ones I dig and which ones you can experiment with. Okay, moving on to the next comment. It comes from Sarah Bresniak. Hopefully I said that correctly. She says this, Awesome, Tony. Great show. Thanks for showing my guitar arsenal. After your Resonator episodes, looking to add a Gretsch, who was owned by Baldwin at one time, to my current guitar arsenal. Also, when I retire, I will be signing up to be in the TAC family. You got me playing Freight Train, fingerstyle, small win. Indeed, Sarah, uh, we will welcome you into the TAC family at any point in time, and I am happy to hear that your guitar arsenal will be growing with a brand new resonator. Now, speaking of the TAC family, let's go ahead and see what they're working on today. Today is Tuesday. The TAC family works on a guitar lick on Tuesdays because, well, every day within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we work on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. Mondays is a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge and Fridays a chord transition challenge. Today they're working on a guitar lick and I think you'll see that it is rather banjo infused. Foggy Mountain Git Joe is on deck for today. Tone, what the hell does that name even mean? Well, I took the banjo intro to Foggy Mountain Breakdown and I guitarified it. And instead of finger picking it or using finger picks to play it like you would on a banjo, we're gonna do it with a flat pick. Now, this lick is not a one-trick pony by 
any means. In fact, I, I could have very well have called this the can of worms lick because it leads to so many options. We'll get to those in a bit, but first I want you to hear this so you can kind of conceptualize it as a whole, and then we'll start breaking it apart, mining for really useful pieces, and there are quite a few. So uh, without further ado, here's how the lick sounds. Pretty cool lick. Uh, I actually tweaked it just a little bit uh, after that intro. You can go. Instead of. But you, you get the idea. It's really the same thing. It's just, just kind of uh, six of one, half dozen of the other. Okay, so that's it in its entirety. Tone, where the heck am I gonna, am I gonna even use this? Don't worry, I got gotcha. you. Uh, but first, Tack Family, to learn this note for note, uh, please go ahead and log in. This is your daily challenge. Click on Start Challenge. That'll take you to the teaching video. Once you get it under your fingers, move to the play along video. Pick a speed that's comfortable for you, and then go ahead and open up the tab in a separate window. Click that tab icon in the lower lower right hand corner that will allow you to have uh, the video in the tab right next to one another. Okay, we're going to take this piece by piece because there are three distinct pieces here that I think are beyond useful. Uh, so first and foremost, this intro. You'd think that, well, it's just an intro, it's not really going to do anything. It actually adds a considerable amount of punch to your rhythm guitar or the entry to a solo. Let me first show you how this first part manifests as just a little punch to your rhythm guitar. It would sound something like this. This is a great way to kind of give it that little uh, grit, that little, uh, well, punch is the word I used before. Um, you can also use that series of double stops, playing two strings at a time, two notes at a time, uh, as an intro to a solo. Uh, might sound something like this. Or something along those lines. Just played a bunch of random notes, but you can see it kind of sets up what you're about to play. Kind of a, a walk into a guitar solo. Okay, the next piece is that kind of a, um, we'll call it a banjo roll, but it actually adds a wonderful dimension to your rhythm guitar. I want you to picture this scenario. Uh, you're playing guitar with three different buddies. Somebody's hammering on a G chord here. <laughs> Great, another person's choosing to play this G chord. So both ends of the sonic spectrum are represented. You have the low end, you have the high end. But strumming is happening, okay? So if you wanna add some depth, some texture, you can take that, that middle piece of the lick, we'll call it the banjo roll piece, and use that because it functions really well over a G chord. That would sound like this. Kind of brings some of that punch to your rhythm guitar playing. And it, well, it sounds really cool. Again, especially if you have other folks uh, uh, representing the, the strumming end of the, the spectrum. This is more of a cross picking type of situation. Now, the final portion of this lick is just as useful. And I like to use it as the ending to a guitar solo. Let me isolate the piece first, and then I'll show you how it looks at the, as uh, uh, the ending to a, maybe a solo run or maybe even a longer lick. It would sound like this just by itself. <laughs> Okay, so that's it by itself, but how does that work uh, at the end of a guitar solo? Well, let's take a look. Here's, here's, again, a bunch of random notes. Think of it as a guitar solo, and I'll place that portion of the lick right at the end. Something like that, and you can actually uh, keep it going uh, infinitely really, but kind of to, to make a point or to drive home a motif, you can keep repeating that single measure. That would sound like this. Kind of 
goofed up on the first one, but you get the idea. You kind of cut off that, that open G string and then just continue to loop the lick. It works great over a G chord. It works great over a D chord as well. Um, so there you have it. A really cool, uh, seemingly one trick pony ish lick or portion of a song that you can kind of, again, mine for some really good uh, guitar goodies. Okay, before we get back to the show, I do want to talk about something really quickly. I think I can get long winded, but I'm going to try my best to, to keep it tight here. I want to talk about reality and being realistic when it comes to your guitar routine. Okay, because I fell into this trap and you likely have to, or maybe maybe you're about to, or maybe you're in the process of falling into this trap. And I, I just want you to be careful. When I first started playing guitar, I was like, I'm gonna play guitar for an hour every day. Of course, I have an hour every single day to play. At this point, I was in college. Of course I did. I had all this free time, all the free time in the world. On paper, yes, I had the time. However, when it came to reality, I did not. I was going uh, to class full-time, a full-time student. I had a full-time job. So having an hour a day to play guitar, not really realistic. Again, on paper, it all checked out. The math looked great. In real life, wasn't gonna happen. And I say this as a, as a warning to you because a lot of times, and I encourage you to do this, I want you to write out your guitar routine. It's really fun to see it and it helps, it helps kind of, it, it helps hold you accountable to a guitar routine. But uh, when you're designing your guitar routine, a routine that works for you, this could be three days a week, four days a week, five days a week, whatever works for you, seven days a week, I want you to be realistic, taking into account that life gets busy, that life throws you curveballs, that what it looks like on paper might not always be how it plays out in real life. Because a lot of times I hear, well, I, yeah, I can play guitar seven days a week, 10 minutes a day, pfft, I can play for 30 minutes a day, no problem. Please, just, just pump the brakes a little bit. I know that you have the best of intentions. I had the best of intentions. I wanted to get better. The quickest way to get better is to, to play guitar a lot. And I thought an hour a day was realistic. It definitely wasn't. So I, I just want you to beware. I want you to play guitar consistently. I want you to play guitar regularly and, and achieve that progress. But when you set unrealistic expectations, it's like this negative weed gets planted in your brain and pretty soon you're like, oh, I missed a bunch of days. Uh, this guitar routine thing is not really working out. I want it to work out. It will work out if you set your sights if, if you base your guitar routine in reality, okay? So if you're thinking, yeah, seven days a week, half hour, why don't you just trim it back to seven days a week, minimum of 10 minutes? Because this way, it, you place yourself in a win-win scenario. You either get 10 minutes in as your minimum, feels pretty good, feels also very realistic and very doable, but if you go beyond 10 minutes, think of it as bonus time. So again, it's, it's a subtle shift, but it really puts your, your mind in the right place and it helps you truly feel that regularity, that consistency that we all want out of our guitar, out of our guitar routine. It was gonna be a really smooth ending, but turns out I, I'm, uh, I got a little bit of a mush mouth today. <laughs> so best of luck with your guitar routine. And again, remember, please do be realistic. What looks good on paper might not always play out the way we want it to in real life. Picking back up on the comments from the Guitar Pick episode, the next one comes from John Lowry Beaumont. If Blue Chip wasn't somewhere on this list, I'd question all of it. Do they sound 80 times better? Hell no. But if you hold on to your picks, they sound and feel amazing. I've played them for about a decade on acoustic and have only lost one. Uh, you know what, John, I completely agree. I think, you know, that list of picks that I offered in that episode, you know, the lesser expensive ones don't sound cheap and blue chips don't sound expensive. However, there's this piece of, of me personally that if I pay 40 bucks for a pick, I'll make darn sure I'm not going to lose it. So I think you, uh, you're onto something there. Uh, the final comment comes from Michael Simmons and he says this, I have a Preston Thompson Mad Addy Dreadnought on order. Would you upgrade to Brazilian? Tough question, Michael. This really comes to this really comes down to how much money you have to spend on the guitar. You know, I'm I've really been pleased with with my Thompson with Madagascar Rosewood back and sides. I think the tone is exquisite, and I think that Brazilian offers exquisite tone as well. Um, if you can shake it, I think a Brazilian upgrade would be awesome. If you can't shake it, I don't think 
you'll be sad that you have Madagascar rosewood. I'll just go ahead and leave it at that. Yes, it's your second shot of acoustic news you can use, and you may or may not know this about me, but my favorite movie of all time is The Shining. I've got a tattoo of the Grady sisters on the inside of my arm. Anyways, I promise this has to do with guitar. Somebody photoshopped a guitar into the most famous scene of The Shining. You have to see it, it cracked me up, and I think it'll crack you up too. Documentary time, scratch that, free documentary time. Howlin' Wolf, phenomenal electric blues player, historical electric blues player. Well, I just found a free documentary about him on FlixHouse.com. F-L-I-X-H-O-U-S-E.com. It's entitled The Howlin' Wolf Story, The Secret History of Rock and Roll. It's free, you have to check it out for the music and for the never before seen footage. When I say the words plastic guitar, what do you think of? Probably a crummy sounding toy, right? Well, not in Nathaniel Murphy's hands. If you don't know about Nathaniel, I've mentioned him plenty of times before on the Acoustic Tuesday show. I am delighted and honored to call him a friend. And well, somebody gave him a plastic archtop guitar and he made this thing sing. Check it out. And on those plasticky notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, I'll be sharing with you what I think are the best bourgeois guitars ever to be made. That's happening on next week's episode. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. And before I let you go, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers to you. Guitar Geeks Unite.